hello guys uh, welcome to hnj academy as we bring you some yet exciting news that you can now use python in excel okay so what this means is that you'll be able to combine python formulas with the excel grid to clean explore and analyze your data okay so as you might already be aware of, Python is one of the best packages for statistical analysis, data science, and machine learning. So this integration with Excel is definitely going to be a game changer. Like uh, if you have been an Excel user as well as a Python user, then uh, having these two things in one place is definitely some good news. Okay, so uh, on this tutorial, I'll be taking you through on how you will be using python in excel okay so to get started using python with excel um what you do you go to the formulas ribbon here and uh, select insert python after you have selected a cell in your excel so when you select excel python it will activate the cell uh for python all right or alternatively what you can do is in the cell you write the function is equal to py then select it with the tab then it then activates the cell for python all right so uh when the cell like writes this py in blue then it's telling you that it's active for python commands all right so and uh the formula by here does the same as well and uh you would prefer to write the python code in the formula by here because you can easily uh, expand this and write your code etc okay for so for study let me just write something like x is equal to one so i'm just uh giving this variable x is equal to one and then uh to run the commands uh of the python cell you use control and uh, all right <clears throat> so uh this one here this symbol here you see it sh will show that this cell is a python object okay so uh that's how you write co python uh, commands in excel all right then uh the next thing we're going to look at here is how you then uh, combine uh, python with excel cells and ranges all right so if you want to reference like python ranges or python tables or uh, uh, python cells in your code uh, when you are writing the python code in the python cell uh, you are going to use the excel function okay for example here i can say y is equal to xl then you open brackets then you open codes and uh you then write the name of the cell that you want the year let's say i'm um, referencing a2 then you close the bracket right so if i run this one uh it will give me the contents of cell a2 okay just like that all right then you can as well uh, reference uh, a range in the same way uh, let's say c is equal to xl then we open brackets open quotes then i uh, will write a range something like p2 through let's just say uh, c10 all right now this is a range we have referenced a range and then we close here then control and uh should uh give us the result all right so this is the excel data frame that it gives us here and uh <clears throat> you can always uh toggle between the outputs all right so uh, about the output types uh, the python uh, cell will give you uh, room for two output types okay the first one is what you see here uh same data frame it shows that uh, this cell is a python data frame object uh, so if you click on this it will expand for you to see the data frame so this is literally just the range that we have referenced from b2 through c10 all right so that's how a python object is displayed as an output or alternatively <coughs> 
it can also give you like uh, the excel values so if you come here uh, you can select this arrow and then you can change the output to excel value then uh, it will show you in the excel grid like the contents of that cell okay so uh what it means that in python this can be oh uh, this can be stored just as a single object uh, within that cell but then you can then choose to display it through the excel grid okay like that then uh, about the calculation order uh, excel is very uh, i mean python python is very sequential in its calculations like uh, when it is uh, reading the lines of code uh, it starts with the first line then going to the next going to the next going to the next like in the sequential order uh, the lines of code are so that's why you see uh, we initially we had x is equal to one then we the, the next line was y is equal to x1 uh, uh, y is called xla2 and then uh when we didn't have this last line here we only had the result for a2 coming down but then since this was the last line that excel ran is the last is, is the line that is going to display as the output okay so <coughs> excel will run the codes sequentially then uh outside the cell excel also has like uh, the sequence it runs lines of code like in the sheet here excel will run uh the python cells in horizontal order like when you have um a multiple python cells that contains python code uh, it will first run uh, the the commands in the first python cell then uh it runs uh the other cells horizontally then comes to the next row runs horizontally and so forth and so forth and so forth so that's where you see that uh if we remove uh this cause here that we have in this initial cell then you are not probably going to have this result because uh this will be run after the first cell here but then if we remove this it's not going to change this in any way okay so it's how python operates all right and then uh after the sheets it will also run uh if you are doing your operations in multiple sheets then uh excel will as well uh, run in the order the sheets are i mean like the python the python will run the commands in the order of the sheets from the first going onwards okay so the next thing here uh, we can look at is the recalculation okay so as you can see uh if i change here uh, let me just do this here if i change here you will see the contents uh of this one here they do not change because uh probably the recalculation is not set to automatic all right so here you can come to formulas and come to calculation options if it's on partial calculation uh mode then it means that uh, you will have to to tell uh, the excel to recalculate uh, the contents of the cell so to recalculate you use this one here the calculate now then it will do the recalculation then this one uh, then the sense it's referencing now you have nothing all right but if it's on automatic recalculation then it means that as you change the precedence then uh the rest of the outputs also change uh, with respect to the changes that have been made okay so that is the automatic uh, recalculation okay that you see here all right so you can always change like the recalculation uh to partial or manual depending on what you want okay so um, the most beautiful thing uh, about excel that we want to uh, about python in excel that we want to to really explore is uh how we are going to bring in uh, like the beautiful outputs that python produces now in excel here okay so yeah we 
that python can help you produce some very beautiful graphics that will be very much uh, complex to come up with in in excel but then now with python uh, it should be much easier all right so i'll just check you through um how we can do uh, some of these analysis uh using python here in excel okay so i will be using this uh, irish data set uh so this irish data set is a data set that is built in python and i have used this code here to call the data set so i will be using the data set uh for this uh few statistical analysis that i just want to show you now how you can easily do them in excel all right so beginning uh is the descriptive statistics all right um these are the ones that you would calculate one by one uh, on your data set in excel but then now with python uh you can just calculate all of these at once okay so uh, this is our iris data here uh i put it in a table so uh but then used this command here to to put uh, the table is a data frame all right so symbol if we is the name of the data frame uh, and then we we'll use the excel function as we have uh, showed earlier then iris data set 2 is the name of this table and the hash all uh, is just telling it to take all the contents of that table in headers is called true we'll set the first line uh, to headers of the data frame all right so this serves uh this data set is a data frame here so control enter we have that one then uh next after that we use this symbol f dot describe to produce all these descriptive statistics that you can see here all right so it will give you the count mean standard deviation uh minimum uh 25th percentile 50 percentile 75th percentile and the maximum for all these uh records which we can get descriptive statistics for so this is now how easily you can get a descriptive statistics on your data using python just using this describe function symbol df to describe open and close brackets then you get your district your descriptive statistics okay and this one here is saved uh, is excel values but that's where we said you can toggle between it being a python object and it being an excel value all right but definitely as you can see excel values um, make a better presentation of the results uh, if you want to like visualize the whole output all right then the next thing we have here is a scatter plot all right uh we have used uh, these commands here to come up with a scatter plot for two of the variables that we have in there all right so we use the pyplot that is found in uh matplot library uh so this is what you use to plot the scatter plot uh, in python and we just use those commands here in referencing uh the columns that we want to plot on the scatter plot and uh don't worry if you if you don't know much python or programming uh don't say uh oh, this is not gonna be useful to me because i don't know programming i don't know this you will get used to it and here yeah, right now in the world of chat gpt it's pretty simple uh to get these python codes you can just go on chat gpt then tell chat gpt i want to plot a scatter plot of this against this give me a code then chat gpt will just give you the code then you come and paste right here and run then you are gonna get your results a symbol a start okay and then with time you will be getting used to it and then can easily do it from your head all right so uh this is how we plotted uh the scatter plot here then uh the image uh will be in a cell and then if you click here then you can visualize the output and but then to view it as an excel output if you 
change it to Excel value, it will give you the image right in that cell and that should not be very much visible. Make it visible, uh, one way you could expand the cell uh, like this, but then uh, it will kind of distort the rest of the sheet and make it a bit ugly. So uh, one way you can do is what we then did here is okay let's change this back to uh, python object first then what we did here is we matched these cells and then used uh, this small uh, formula here to get uh, the image the python image that is in cell g2 and display it here in this cell all right so here it should be displayed on the merged cells all right and uh if you want it uh, to be displayed on a much bigger space, you can then just go and merge uh, more of the space. Like here, if I say this, and then you merge this one, now it has merged onto uh, a bigger space. So that's how you can make it bigger and bigger and visualize it better. Okay, so this is uh, the scatter plot uh, that we can get using the Python here. In Excel. All right. Then uh, the next thing that we want to look at here is the correlation matrix. All right. So for the correlation matrix, uh, we use these two lines of code here. The first one uh, is the one which uh, puts our data into a data frame. So uh, we have seen this code earlier and uh, we've explained how it works. Then the next line here is what to give us the correlation matrix. All right, so symbol data frame dot correlation, then we take the numeric only to be true. Then it will give us uh, this correlation matrix for the numeric uh, variables. Okay, then display here our correlation matrix. Very much pretty easy and quicker than what you would uh, normally do in Excel. All right, so this is how you can easily get the correlation matrix. Then uh, the next thing that we want to look at here is the pair plot, the pair plot, okay. And this is uh, a, a plot which kind of shows uh, plots of all the variables against each other, okay. And this is one of the plots that you normally wouldn't uh, easily come up with in Excel. But uh, when you use Python now, you can uh, use two lines of code to get this plot. All right. And it uses uh, the Seaborn package. Uh, it, so the, the Seaborn package is the one which is uh, the pair plot modules for you to plot uh, the pair plot. All right. So first of all, here you import uh, the Seaborn. Then uh, we put our table into a data frame. Then uh, we plot the pair plot. It's called SNS. SNS is just the Seaborn here, which I've inputted as SNS dot pair plot. Then uh, inside here, we write the variables that we want to be included within the pair plot from the same data frame here. Okay, so basically you can then practice uh, writing these Python calls. The more you practice, the more you get used to them and the more you know how to use them. All right, and the more it will be easier for you to use the Python in Excel. All right, so <clears throat> I'm just showing you these calls here. You can then uh, do this on your own, like call the Irish data set in Python, then redo all these calculations that we have done here and practice on your own. All right. So this one here will give us this beautiful uh, pair plot. But we can see uh, here. Okay, it's too busy. It's running the commands like they definitely have to go to an interpreter where they are run and then the results come back here. So this is our pair plot uh, for these variables. All right. And it kind of uh, makes us visualize uh, all the wall of all that I said easy in one place like that. All right. Then uh, next is uh, linear regression. And this is the last for us to do here how you can produce uh, your linear regression graphs, the scatter plots and the line of best fit 
using uh, Python here in Excel. All right. Uh, so uh, you use again the Sibon uh, module, the Sibon package, and here uh, we convert the table to a data frame. Then uh, we can then say SNS to regression plot. Then data is called symbol data frame, and then these are the variables that uh, we are plotting uh, or we, we are regressing against each other. The first one is the x axis, then the second one is on the y axis. So, and then these are labels. This is how you label the x axis and the y axis. All right. So, if we run uh, this code, then it gives us uh, a regression plot with the line of best fit okay and which is uh, one good feature about this one in excel usually you can easily put a scatter plot but then uh you wouldn't easily uh put the lines of best fit and uh the confidence interval that we can easily uh put here uh, okay so let me just try to enlarge this so yeah so that can be visualized easy like the confidence regions that are along uh, the line of best fit all right so this is how useful a pattern can be in excel and the more you get used to it the more you'll be able to do more and more of your statistical analysis and produce more and more beautiful and results okay so this is all we have today for our python in excel so guys thank you very much for watching uh we just hope this was helpful and please stay tuned for more as we will be bringing in more tutorials on how you can make use of the python in excel feature as it comes all right thank you guys for watching hope you will subscribe and that